Okay, shalom everybody. Thank you for joining. Chodesh Tov. It's exciting this month because it's a month of extreme chesed. There's no tachanun, there's no confession the whole month. It's a month of big lights, Bezat Hashem, and redemption, personally, spiritually. You, you've heard all this already. But to the point of the class, stringencies on Pesach. As you know very well, many, many people overdo it on Pesach. And in a sense, it is justified. It is justified because the book's right. Since it is humanly impossible to be saved from a particle of chametz, because on, on Pesach, it says in the, in the Torah, and then the, 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 the Gemara, that chametz, the prohibition of eating chametz is, is a, a mashu, something, a particle. How could you humanly be saved? How is it possibly, humanly possibly to be saved from a mashu chametz? So what many books, many sages, many poskim write to do, do is be as strict as you can on Pesach. And that way you have the best chance to be saved from chametz on Pesach. Rabbi Nachman doesn't hold like that. Rabbi Nachman said about himself, Again, it's not an opinion that everyone has to hold by. It's opinions in the post scheme, in the halacha codifiers. Rabbi Nachman said this is unnecessary. He said about himself that when he was young, younger, he was very, very careful regarding the water to, to drink on Pesach. Because as you know, if you drink water from a pond, okay, from a lake, your water system is taking filtered water from a lake. What happens now if during Pesach, some guy is going fishing and he throws particles of bread into the water, okay? Now, and then that water that now evaporates becomes disintegrated into the water system, goes into the filtering system, takes that particle of bread in the water, filters it out, but still there's something of a something of that particle of that of that chametz that goes into the filtering system of the chlorine and everything they put until it reaches your tap water. Can you drink that water? It's a big question, right? It's, it's discussed in the halacha. There are, we won't go into right now how it's permissible today that we do drink tap water. We're allowed to drink technically tap water. But Rabbi Nachman, in his time, he said that he was very, very strict of a worry of there being water. Then they didn't have plumbing, obviously. So water was from wells or from bodies of water. There also, there's a worry that maybe particles of bread, somebody threw in some leftover bread into the well or in the lake, and then they would take water on, on Pesach. He said he was so overly strict. He had thoughts maybe that for Pesach, to go to move to a, a city or a village where there's a spring of water coming directly from out of the ground, directly from out of the ground, which means there's no chance of there being pieces of chametz in that water and to drink that type of water. He said afterwards that was total foolishness. He regrets thinking like that and trying to be like that. He said, Chumrot yeterot, excess stringencies on Pesach are totally unnecessary. So the question is, so how do I, little me, have a chance to be saved from chametz on Pesach if now I'm doing what I can, I'm not overdoing it, I'm doing what I can, but there's a chance that Hamid's coming in and books say yes to do something. Rabbi Nachman's advice. What was it, advice? Is your simcha on Purim is your protection from Hamid's on Pesach. He said, since it is humanly impossible on your own, as much as you will do your best and you'll, you'll, you'll even overdo it, and still, like they say in Hebrew, ve'ulai, even after all of this, still, still there's a chance that you'll have chametz on Pesach. So if that's the case, he says, so it's not going to help 100%. There is an advice that helps. And he says the dancing and joy on Pesach, on, so on Purim, is your sigula, is your spiritual protection from chametz on Pesach. You want to be protected on, from chametz, you will need divine intervention because on your own, even after, after all the stringencies, you will not make it. You'll need help. You'll need divine intervention, Hashem's compassion on you to help you to be saved from chametz. And by the way, 
why is there such a deal made of being safe from a particle in chametz? Why is it so strict? I mean, as the Torah tells us, you, it's, you have to be very careful not to eat chametz. It's karet. Karet means excision. But the Arizal opens up a little. The Arizal says a powerful statement. He says that according to how much a person, if a, if a person is protected entirely from chametz during the seven days of chametz, he won't sin all year round. You hear that? I'll say it again. If a person now is protected totally from eating even a particle of chametz entering his mouth on the seven days of Pesach, or in the case of the diaspora, eight days, he won't sin all year round. When you hear that, you begin to think, where am I holding them? I, I see how I am during the year. I see that I'm not holding at the best level in holiness and in, in, in not sinning. So I see that I do need help here. I see that as much as I'm keeping Pesach and I have all these chumrot and I'm being strict and I cover the door handles and I eat in a bag. I don't know, people have a lot of stringencies. Yes, I understood. We're not going to make fun of any groups or anything. But the question is, is this where to invest in life? Is this where I invest? Because when a person, as you know very well, when people overdo it on the preparations of Pesach, what happens? They get angry. They're uptight. They scream at each other. They scream at their family members. Why didn't you do like this? What? And you're screaming, which getting angry is a uh, isur. That is a prohibition, a doraita from the Torah. Okay, that's a prohibition from the Torah. And the, the overstringency is not as strict and as damaging if you, if, you over, if you transgress those stringencies as the anger that's generated from being super machmir, super overstringent, okay? So you're losing out. On one hand, yes, okay, I did my super best and even more than my best to not eat chametz on, 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 to, to, to keep all the stringencies, but I paid the price. I got angry, I blew up, and I'm not happy. I come to the seder, uptight, eh, like uh, constipated. What is this? You lost out. The, the idea is to do the mitzvot besimcha, to reach Pesach besimcha. Not, oh, I did this, I didn't do like that. To do the mitzvot besimcha, what's, what's wrong? What's happening? For this again, Rabbi Nachman teaches, your joy on Purim will determine your Pesach. But to be happy on Purim, a person needed to daven a lot. They say 40 days before Purim, davening to have the merit of having a good Purim, a happy Purim, enough to tip the scale to have a protection, okay? With all this, what are we trying to say? That to be over stringent on Pesach is not the attitude, is not the goal, and is unnecessary. Another example Rabbi Nachman brought down is the idea of eating gebrochts. Gebrochts in Yiddish means shuruya in Hebrew, which means uh, matzah that came in contact with water. For example, the classic dish called matzah ball soup. You have many people, many Jews, who have the custom not to eat matzah ball soups because it's matzah and it was re-added to water and cooked and we're worried to reactivate any chametz traces in the, in the matzah. Halacha is, according to the, the Shulchan Aruch standard, that there's no bishul acharei, there's no uh, b- b- cooking after the matzah has been baked. You can't now reactivate any chametz particles at all in the matzah because there's no chametz particles. But there is certain, there are certain opinions hold that it's a possibility. And because there's a custom of not eating gebrochts, not eating shruya, not eating like matzah ball soups and putting your matzah in a soup or eating it with liquidy food, okay? What these people do is they eat the matzahs alone and then they eat the, the main food dishes, the salads, without matzah, okay? Rabbi Nachman himself, he had the custom not to eat gebrochts, not to eat shruya. In other words, not to eat matzah ball soup and that stuff. But, but, he said clearly, if it's your custom to eat gebrochts, shruya on Pesach, then continue your custom. And if it's not, then don't. Even there, there's no need to be over crazy. There was a disciple of Nosson, his name was Rav Nachman Tut. He told his family members, if you see me eating matzah and crumbs of the matzah fall into like the soup or anything, you don't have to tell me. Don't, don't draw, you don't have to now, oh, look, look, you have pieces of matzah there. I, I, you don't have to tell me. And it's okay that I eat it and I don't know about it. It's okay. Keep it that way. I don't have to be over stringent about that. Okay. So what's the point here? Rabbi Nachman himself, fine, he didn't eat gebrochts, but he tells us 
you, if your custom is not to do so, don't begin to think, oh, Rabbi Nachman did it. So I want to be like Rabbi Nachman. I'm also not going to eat gebrochts. Wrong. Rabbi Nachman said it. He said clearly, if it's your custom to eat, continue. If not, not. Don't change your customs. This again, I may have said in the past, is one of the most beautiful things about Rabbi Nachman and his teachings. He doesn't require you to change your customs, your Jewish minhagim. If it's your custom to dove in like a Sfaradi, continue. No one's saying, oh, no, but to be an authentic breast live, if I want to be the real McCoy, I'm going to have to start diving in Nusach Sfarad. Many people, many Baal Shuvas, for example, they think that way. They think to become breast live, you have to become totally like the Hasidim and dove in like them and, and to, to do all the minhagim of the Ashkenazim, etc., and the Hasidim. Rabbi Nachman said, no. Hashem created you in a specific way. This is your tikkun. If now you try to change it, now you're going against way, the way Hashem presented your tikkun to take place. Hashem created you as a Moroccan or as a Yemenite or as a Persian or as an Iraqi or an Ashkenaz or Sfarad, whatever. That's where you were supposed to be. And now you start now, oh no, I have to find my way out to try to become someone else. Then that's the problem. You're trying to be somebody else, not you. So who says after 120, when you leave this world, you've done your tikkun? Who says now that they won't send you back because you redirected it? They put you in a certain spot and you all start making changes. This again is the beautiful beauty of Rabbi Nachman's teachings. Rabbi Nachman once said, Rabbi Nachman wasn't concerned in what we're doing, what we what to do. We received from Moshe Rabbeinu, and we have all our different customs in the twelve tribes and the, and the communities, etc. What Rabbi Nachman was concerned about is how are you doing what you are doing already? How are you putting on your tefillin? How do you keep Shabbat? How do you do Yom Kippur? Are you into the mitzvah? How do you point tzitzit? How is your attitude? How do you learn Torah? How do you daven? That's what he's concerned about, okay? And especially with Pesach, this applies. That people go overboard, overboard, especially when you're young and you're vibrant, you have a lot of energy, you want to go all the way. There are people who clean every part of the house, spray painting and bleach everywhere. And no, 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 don't, don't go there, don't go that. You go nuts over overdoing it. When you know the halacha and you know what's required, then you know what's not required because most people don't know what's required. So the, the automa automatic attitude is stringent. They see the neighbor doing like this, so I should also do like that also. If they did like this, oh, that means this is the way to do, right? To learn halacha, so you know what's right, what's wrong, and not to worry. Not to see it, but I see people doing like that. But you know the halacha. You know halacha says that's not required, so why go crazy? Rabbi Nachman's attitude is to be happy in doing the mitzvot. But you can only be happy if you're not overstressed, okay? Pesach is man cheruteinu. It's the time of our freedom. Freedom from what? Freedom from what? Freedom from sadness, from depression, from pressures, from worries. That's the cheruteinu, because Rabbi Nachman teaches, lesson 24, that the essence of galut, when we say that people are in exile, means they're not happy, that there's a lack of simcha in life, and that's, that's pretty clear. We see most people walk around with everything they're going through, so they're weighed down and made sad and depressed. Pesach is a time to breathe again to feel fresh, to feel reconnected, to start again. The matzah is a healing, by the way. The matzah is a physical healing. Don't believe what the doctors say. The matzah is an asvata. It's a refua for even physical ailments and spiritual ail uh, ailments to help a person start again. But now to receive this refua, you have to be in the right frame of mind. What's the right frame of mind? Is not to be overpressured. Take Pesach, the preparations, do it with simcha, not with now, oh, I'm running around, this and that, and I forget myself. I'm speaking for myself also, by the way. I'm not, I'm not there. This is the attitude that a Jew should have, especially for Pesach, is not to overdo it, not to go overboard, to be happy. No overstringencies. Just do what's required to do and do it be simcha, be happy. What's the problem? Come to the center there with joy, with happiness. Some people, they, they're so crazy with the cleaning that they clean all air of Pesach still <laughs> and they come to the center there, oh my God, how am I going to do this? I'm zonked, I'm out of it, right? You lost out. That, that's not the whole thing. The whole thing is, whatever you came away, you took it with, with submission and with joy. This is what Hashem gave me, Bezat Hashem. So going back, stringencies are unnecessary. Customs, there's no specific breast of custom in Pesach. When we say breast of Minhagim, it's like associated with singing special tunes. They have special nigunim to the, you know, the at the end of the Haggadah, all the songs, right? Kilo na'e, kilo ya'e. There are many beautiful breast of songs 
that have nothing to do with your custom. You can be a Syrian Jew and sing the breast of Nigunim. It doesn't contradict. You're singing it out of joy to connect to Rabbi Nachman and his following with these Nigunim that they sang. And I want to have this connection. As under the halacha. And even if you don't, doesn't mean you're not breast of anymore. <laughs> In other words, whatever Hashem sent you your way, take it, be happy. And if it's not overboard to do it. One point, another point to mention is sometimes with society developing, a stringency becomes normal. In other words, it becomes acceptable. I'll give you an example. Many people today prefer anyways all year round to drink bottled water as opposed to tap water. And these people, these same people, when it comes to Pesach, since anyways, they're drinking bottled water all year round, and it doesn't cost so much more to buy cases of bottled water, what these people do is, since anyways, it's convenient and it's okay, and they're doing it already as anyways, is they buy a few extra bottles of water, and they use the bottled water to drink and to cook with during Pesach. Here in Eretz Yisrael, in the Holy Land, in Yerushalayim, it's becoming more and more common because anyways, bottled water is very readily available. It's not so expensive. And it's taken from the source. It's bottled. And they also has, they put on it kosher the Pesach, whatever, because it's bottled at the source. And there's no way for sure for, for any excesses to come in, any chametz to come in. So this, and so it, with time, as, as life develops, these things become like norm and status quo and easy to do. So many people adapt to do it because anyways, it's not so hard. So an astringency which becomes accessible and it's easy to do and everybody's doing it anyways. So then there's a room to take the astringency because now it's become common, right? Many things which were additional and people, society made a big deal out of it and became normal and the consumers made it so accessible that it should be easy to do. So yeah, wh why not? I'll take it with me. So here's an example of, of bottled water. People, they drink, anyways, many, wherever you go, in North America and Canada, all over, people are into now bottled water, bottled water. So for Pesach, and anyways, you're drinking bottled water. So go with the flow, not a problem, right? You have some people here, there's, a, there's some people have a custom, which is like a very big stringency. They have like a big giant, like vat or, or jar, barrel, plastic, and they fill it up with water before Pesach. And they use that water for the entire seven days of Pesach for eating and drinking. The whole idea, by the way, is if there's a particle, I'll just to explain on a halachic perspective, so you just know what's, what's the idea here. Water, uh, if now in water, drinking water, or, or you know, lake water, or underground water, there was a particle of chametz in that water before Pesach, so there's the rule what's called batel b'shishim, that it's, not, it's nullified with 60 parts. If now there are 60 parts of water ratio to that one part of chametz, the chametz is considered water now. This is before Pesach. If this takes place on Pesach, it doesn't work. In other words, there's no batel b'shishim on Pesach itself. Person has a particle of chametz on Pesach. You can't have 59 parts ratio of water to nullify it on Pesach. It doesn't work. Beforehand, yes. So what people do, some people do, they're very strict, is they fill up a big thing of water supply for the whole seven days of Pesach, similar to what Rabbi Nachman was worried about in his time, okay? And since the water was already drawn from the taps before Pesach and this barrel, so if there was a chance of a chance of a chance of there being chametz, it's nullified. So that's great. Now they have drinking water and, and cooking water for the whole seven days. This is a big stringency. A big, big stringency. Most people, again, use tap water during Pesach because the way the laws work in, in most countries here in Israel and North America is they're very, very strict of what goes into the tap water. Very strict to the extent that there's no room for chametz. And even if there is a chametz, it's like a chemical, it's a chametz particle. But it, since it's already a chemical and it's not fit for eating for human consumption, there's no chametz here, Right. You have to, when you learn halacha, it's, it becomes amazing. When the, the Torah is beautiful. The more you know, because a person who doesn't know anything, oh, it's chametz. Everything is chametz. There's like paste. The person made paste with water and flour, and it's unedible. Oh my God, it's chametz. Be careful. You can't, you can't keep it. Like, you have to sell it and everything. When you learn halachas, you know clearly what's permissible 
what's forbidden, etc. when it comes to chametz. There's what's called chametz nuksha, chametz which is no longer, it's hard and it's not, you, it, no one can eat it. You're not, even a, not even a dog can eat it, okay? So these are stringencies that people overdo it. And yes, it's considered overdoing. Even today, there's no room for, room for that. It's just a custom, it's a strange thing to do because their parents did it and their grandparents did it. So they're continuing the Khumra, okay? But however, if it's not your custom, let's say, why go crazy now? Why adopt upon yourselves extra things? Like once Rabbi Nachman once said, Rabbi Nachman once said, Alvai, if only we can just keep the Torah, even the minimal Torah, if we can only keep already the minimal Torah, what's required according to Halacha, that's already an accomplishment. So why are you looking for that extra, extra, extra stringency to drive you nuts, to drive other people nuts, if now, even in basics of the Torah, you don't know if you know what you're holding there. Rabbi Nachman said, if only we can keep ready the basics of the Torah. His attitude is, be a simple Jew, straightforward, know what Halacha is, learn Halacha, keep it and be strong with it and don't feel bad that you're not doing enough. Be happy with your part. This is especially true with Pesach preparations where everybody goes crazy, no exceptions really, because of the attitude of the time. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. But still, what's necessary is to remember that this is a test and I have to maintain my cool to be the Simcha. With blessings to everybody for a beautiful Pesach. A happy Pesach, right? What do we say? What is the bracha we say to each other? Chag kasher, right? Everyone, move your lips. I want to see you move your lips. Vesa, vesameach. Move your lips, yes. Chag kasher vesameach. Right, that's what we say. A kosher and happy Pesach. Why happy? Because it's understood that you're going to tend to lose it in the preparations for Pesach. You're going to get angry and blow up and everything. It's understood. Because of that, you need the constant reminder. You need the bracha to have a kosher and happy Pesach. Because the preparations before, that I should be happy so that I can appreciate when Pesach comes to be happy on the Pesach holiday itself. So we should all make it. We should see already this now, if now, if not now, tomorrow, whenever, Mashiach coming very, very soon. And all the Jews should come back to Eretz Israel, Like Rashi says in Shira Shirim, that in time to come, the whole Holy Land, the whole Eretz Israel will become Jerusalem and the whole world will become Eretz Israel. So it's a good, it's a big question. If now Miami or Brooklyn will become Eretz Israel, why, why is there a need to come to fly to Yerushalayim? So it could be that we need to do Aliyah Taregel. We need to receive Mashiach with the Beit, Beit HaMikdash. So we need to, yes, come to Yerushalayim, the expanded, the extended Yerushalayim. We should have a good, everybody should have what they need. Rav Nosen once spoke to somebody and uh, the, the person was complaining that he doesn't have, uh, doesn't have enough money to buy the expenses of Pesach, the wine, the matzot, you know, the meat and all the things. He said, I don't know how I'm going to make it. I have no idea how I'm going to make it. So Rav Nosen said, to this disciple, Al Pesach Yiye. For Pesach you'll have. It'll come to you. The question is, Ech zochim le Pesach alein. In Hebrew and Yiddish, how do we merit to the Pesach itself? <laughs> how do we merit to the Pesach? What does that mean? What is Rav Nosen saying? He said to the person, for the gashmut, for the physical needs and necessities for Pesach, don't worry, it's going to come your way. The question is, what you have to work on is, how can I merit to tap in to the light of the Korban Pesach itself? I'm only saying this because we hear more or less, we like and appreciate Rabbi Nachman and his teachings. So the hint here is, Pesach Alein, Pesach itself, Pesach, right, is gematria, the numerical value of 148. 148 is the exact numerical value of Nachman. What Rav Nossin was saying, and this is how the, tra the tradition goes to explain Rav Nossin's statement, you'll have for Pesach. The question is, how will you merit to the light of Rabbi Nachman? The light of this amazing tzaddik, Rabbi Nachman. I I'm on a roll, so one more story. <laughs> one more story related to this, okay? During Cholam in the early 1930s, 1940s, there was a very big Breslov figure 
an amazing man, an amazing person who had the whole Torah on his palm. And he was a great grandson of Rav Nossin. His name was Rav Avraham Sternhartz. He changed his last name when he came to Eretz Yisrael to Rav Avraham Kochavlev. Kochavlev is the Hebrew translation of Sternhartz, which means the, uh, the, the star in the heart, the uh, heart of a star. Sternhartz, Kochavlev, okay? This Rav Avraham Sternhartz was like a wellspring of the entire Torah and of Rabbi Nachman off by heart, even off by heart, even until he passed away in 90-something. The man was a walking everything, a walking library. That's not even the word a library. That's a, that's a, that, that degrades his greatness. It was a walking, living Torah, okay? So once in Cholam Wed, <clears throat> there was a young man who had recently become close to Breslov, and he asked to speak to him. And while speaking to him, he opened up, he confided with Rev. Avram Sternhartz, that since he came to Breslov, he's suffering nonstop opposition from his wife, his family, her family, his rabbis, his fellow friends, students, whatever. The whole surrounding just turned against him, just conflagrated against him. He doesn't know what to do. And he was very broke. He doesn't know what to do here. So Avram Sternhartz gave him some encouragement. And at the end of the encouragement, he says, listen, no, today is Pesach. How, and how, and Pesach, as you know, has the gematria, the numerical value of Nachman, Rabbi Nachman. How can we connect the ideas of Pesach to Rabbi Nachman? So he said, what it says in the Haggadah, if you remember in the Haggadah, by Korech, Korech is when we take the Matzah and the Maror, right? And we eat it together with Haroset, of course. And we say, again, there's different customs between the Sephardic Haggadah and Ashkenaz, but both say this is what Hillel used to do. To remember the Korban Pesach, he would eat the Korban Pesach with Matzah and Maror. So Avram Sternhartz, he said to this man, he said, if you want to taste Rabbi Nachman's light, you want to taste Rabbi Nachman, the Korban Pesach, it comes along with two factors, two conditions. Matzah and Maror. What's Matzah? Matzah, Rabbi Nachman teaches in lesson number five of Likuti Moran, is from the language, from the grammar of Matsuta Umeriva. This is Aramaic, which means strife. Strife and conflict, Matsuta. It's also in the Torah, Ki Yinatsu Anashim. Rabbi Nachman brings this pasuk also. Ki Yinatsu Anashim. In lesson six, he brings that, that verse. Yinatsu means if two men fight, there's a conflict. So matzah, even though matzah is a holy food, but it comes to correspond and represent the strife needed for a person to cleanse them to come to holiness. A person thinks when they do tshuva or they convert or they enter a newer level of Yiddishkeit, everything's going to be smooth. Everything's going to be amazing. Lights, camera, action. No, you're going to have to go through punches. You're going to have to go through a hard time. That's the idea of the conflict, the opposition you face. And maror, what's maror? <laughs> Everybody knows what maror. Maror is bitter, bitter herb, right? Maror, bitter herb. So Avram Sternatsi said, you want a taste of Rabbi Nachman's light? It comes on condition of matzah and maror. You're going to need strife, opposition, and you're going to need the, the, the bitterness. But what do we say afterwards in the Haggadah? Ein maftirin achar afikoman that after you have the afi, the only thing that stays in your mouth, the, the last thing that you're allowed to eat on the night of the seder is what's called the afikoman. Afikoman is also corresponding to the korban pesach. Also, it's the last pizza of matzah, which by the way, don't forget, don't overeat on the night of the seder. Most people, they overeat, they get drowsy, they can't even finish the next two cups, the last two cups of the four cups, and they can't even eat the afikoman before that. It's like killing them. Remember not to overstuff, especially now it's Friday night this year, Friday night, the first night of, of the Seder, to, ha, to be careful to leave room for the Afikoman. That's a halachic requirement. That's not an option. You must be careful to not overdo it. Make good, delicious food, but don't overdo it because you have to make sure to eat the Afikoman. You're, really, you're eating tons of matzah on the night of Pesach and tons of wine. So to be smart, the, the wise man always looks ahead of time. To, to, to make sure to have room for that pikoma. So going back, Avram Sternat said, the last thing that stays, the taste in the mouth, 
is the afikoman, which corresponds to the Korban Pesach also. So he said, that means the matzah, the strife falls away eventually, the bitterness falls away eventually, and all you're left with is the Korban Pesach, the light of this amazing tzaddik, Rabbi Nachman. We should have the merit, all of us, that this Pesach really, to connect to Rabbi Nachman and his teachings. As you know, his birthday was on Shabbat, Rosh Chodesh Nisan. He's born in this month. It's like his month, quote unquote. So Rabbi Nachman's month, if you want to call it like that. We should merit to have a tzaddik in our life, always there to give us the encouragement and advice needed for every challenge and every, every uh, what's it called, turn and, and crossroads that we have to face in our in our journey of life to get to our tikkun and our education, we should have this tzaddik and all true tzaddikim help us to make it. All right, all the best. Thank you for coming. Thank you for joining. And if you have any questions, you can WhatsApp me or email me. Shalom, all the best and kodesh.